All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Take Another Look. Take Another Look is a very special broadcast where we are talking about the book of Revelation verse by verse. And so if you're joining me for the first time, we're looking at the events surrounding the Apostle John as he experiences the heavenly realms, and we are seeing what we can learn from this. In this ongoing series, we're taking a spiritual journey through the book of Revelation, and I'm sharing with you what I believe the Holy Spirit has shared with me. So I hope you are joining me this morning, that you're on board, and if not, that you will see this even later on uh, in the day. Um, so uh, as we look at the book of Revelation and we see the revelation of Jesus Christ, we are seeing truth unveiled in these lessons so i'm just asking you to open your heart open your understanding get your thinking cap on follow with me as i present to you uh the scriptures from the book of revelation and uh, the supporting scriptures and evidence that we're discovering and so what how i define revelation is the unveiling of the father's heart so listen throw away uh, uh, all of the religious thinking and do not be a person. I urge you, do not be a person who throws away valuable information, valuable revelation, simply because you believe things different in the past, only because someone said it was the truth. I'm just asking you to consider what the word of God says. So let's get into this today and let's look at what the Bible says uh, about what John sees and and hears next as he shows us how to operate out of the heavenly realm while ministering right here in this earthly realm. So let's get started today with Revelation chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. And here's how it reads. And when the dragon saw that he had been cast down, cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now, uh, this morning I made a post on Facebook that said, that by the strength of the great wings of the Lord, we are able to soar above all things and operate as sons of God in this earth. And that's a, a uh, re my rendition of what we're seeing in Revelation 12, verse 14, and we'll get into this, so I hope you'll be able to recognize that as we go. So first of all, when this dragon fell, okay, I want you to just, let's just think about that just for a moment. When this dragon fell, here's the thing. We, uh, uh, we have determined that this dragon is not a literal dragon, uh, even in that day, it was not a literal dragon. It was a religious mindset. And as we look at this, uh, it has been cast down from the heavens into the earthliness of man's unrenewed mind and it threw a fit. Now, we're going to understand today when this happened. We're going to understand today a little more about what these symbolic words mean, because when we look at the Bible, especially the book of Revelation, we are not seeing literal events that are taking place. But what we are seeing is literal, uh, is symbolic language. So there are languages in the world where people see and hear things based on pictures. Okay. When someone gives a phrase or gives a picture what happens is is they see things images that depict, de depict a time or a situation uh that they're seeing and so what we see from this <coughs> what we see from this is we're looking at the symbolic language that refers to the first century when this was written and we're going to see why this was written because this is not when we talk about the book of revelation we're not talking about John literally wrote down word for word what he saw, but what he got was a revelation. He got a picture of what was being said or being shown to him, and he wrote it down in, in the form of, of revelation, in the form of 
an interpretation of what he hears. If I say something to you, you form an interpretation about that. Well, that's what had, uh, John said. And 10 different people will get a different image or a different interpretation about what's being spoken. So uh, to, to understand what this means, let's go back just a few verses to Revelation 12, verse 6. And it says, the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God. That she should feed her, that, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. This is this time and time and a, and a half of time and that we're talking about. Okay, now this passage reminds us that when the dragon saw that it was cast down, we read that earlier in chapter 12. So go back and read chapter 12, verse 1 on through to catch up to where we are in your spare time. Uh, this reminds us that when the dragon was cast down unto the earth, it turned to persecute the woman which brought forth the man child. Now, when we talk about the man child, we're talking about Jesus. When we're talking about the in, in a capital letter man child, when we're talking about the man child in the lower case, we're talking about that which was birthed out of Jesus, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The mother of Jesus, the woman who gave birth to the man child, is Mary, the mother of Jesus. But also, uh, uh, there is is more going on here, and you'd have to go back and listen to other lessons on my YouTube channel. Uh, but first of all, let's know this that. The religious mindset in humanity will always attempt to bring persecution toward the message of the virgin birth of the Christ child. The reality is, is people want to even today still are trying to explain away how that there could not have possibly been a virgin birth where Jesus was born from the heavens into this earth realm. But you know what? The fact is, is that's exactly what happened. But there's a lot of symbolism here. So hang with me. The dragon is now cast down into the lower regions of our earthliness and or down to the arena of our carnal thinking instead of existing in the higher or more important realms of our heavenly thinking. Let me just say this to you again, that in our mind, in our thinking, not your brain, but in your soul, there are two parts. There's the renewed part, the part that's, that uh, understands God, the part that, that uh, knows God, the part that fellowships with God. But there's also the unrenewed part in which we are instructed to renew our minds. And that unrenewed part is that religious thinking that's always battling against that which is renewed, the heavenly thinking. So we have two realms of thought. We have the higher realm or the heavenly realm, and we have the lower realm or the earthly realm. And the earthly realm is the lesser of the two. It is the least paid attention to. It is the least focused on. The higher realm are the things of God. And we're going to talk about that some more. Uh, so I'm just clarifying for you. Now, the dragon, a.k.a. religious thinking, lost the right to live in your renewed mind. As a matter of fact, really operates illegally in your mind at all. But the fact is we're getting renewed to thinking. We're starting to understand the things of God. And so in doing that, what we're seeing is, is how this religious mindset lost the battle. Therefore, there is no more struggle. You say, Dr. Bill, I'm struggling right now. Look, struggling is a state of mind. Struggling is a belief system. Struggling is what you think you're going through based on your mind, will, intellect, and emo uh, emotions. So the emotions part says, I can touch it. I can feel it. I can see it. Therefore, I'm struggling. Look, I just want to say it again. There is no more struggle uh, in that renewed place, in that heavenly realm of thought. Yet the lies come from the lower or unrenewed realm of thought. Lies don't come from the devil. Lies don't come from some demon. Lies come from that which is unrenewed within you. And that which is unrenewed within you will even seem like torment or persecution. But you and I are staying focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are focused on him. We are focused on his word. We're focused on what God is doing, not what some lie from some entity being the unrenewed arena of our thinking. Okay, now, notice this. Uh, at this point, 
Our mind is becoming more and more set on things above, not on things of the earth or things of the lower realm of thought. Hebrews 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted as we are yet without sin. In other words, Jesus faced what we are, uh, uh, what we might face in this life. Jesus faced everything that you could possibly face and he did it without sin. Or in other words, let me say it this way, he did it without giving in to the things of this world. He did it without caving in just because there was some pressure. So let's notice this, that this religious mindset has been defeated. This religious mindset will not be defeated, but this religious mindset has been defeated. And in you, that negative lower realm of thought has no right to operate. Hebrews 4 verse 15 in the Passion Translation says, He understands humanity, for as a man, capital M, our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are and conquered sin. This verse is said to be stated as translated from the Aramaic language. The Greek words here for conquered sin says he was without sin or he was sinless. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. He was sinless. He did not become sin. He carried, he became the sacrifice for sin, but he was never sin. He never became sin. Hebrews 4 verse 15 in the message Bible says, we don't have a high priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's, he's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. There's a reality and understanding that how he experienced that, which I want to get into today, so that you can understand when you're facing a difficult time, how or what exactly is going on so that you can step out of that realm of pressure and, and of, of of difficulty and start functioning in the realm that you are brought into by the Lord Jesus Christ. Writer and commentator J. Preston Neve says these words, the passage calls, this passage calls to our mind that it was open, that it was when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, that he turned to persecute the woman, which brought forth the man child. These words refer to the battle that was fought in heaven the battle between the dragon and the overcoming sons of God, a spiritual battle in which Satan has been cast out of the heavens of the spirit where the man child dwells, cast into the earth, the soul realm of each of us individually and is uh, and the solical religious realm of the corporate woman, the church. And so the reality is, is you have a place in you uh, in the renewed part of your thinking that where the mind of Christ dwells, where the mind of Christ is paid attention to, where the mind of Christ is revealed. But there's also that realm where we still operate by the dictates of the flesh. And that is the realm where difficulty takes place. And so we want to understand that as an individual, the Holy Spirit is catching us up to an understanding of the revelation of the finished work of Jesus within us. In terms of that part of us that was made an overcomer in Christ, the spirit man, versus that part of within us, or I would say the spirit man, or that which looks like the spirit man, uh, versus that part of us which is still receiving this revelation, which is in the soulish man, and we are becoming more and more in line with the mind of Christ and becoming willing to cast out the religious mindset of the serpent from our own minds. That's right. You have been given the overcoming life of Jesus. You are flooded with his life. You are flooded with his mind. But unfortunately, sometimes we will not allow ourselves to, to be expanded to the revelation of Jesus because it is in the revelation of Jesus that we find the what is in the mind of Christ so that we can function in the realm of God that we were created to function in. And so we're becoming more and more in line with that. I think this is called 
casting down imaginations. That's right. God will not cast down imaginations for you. As a matter of fact, the imaginations do not dwell in some demonic being. Uh, the, 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 the reality is, is imaginations dwell in the unrenewed part of your soul that is being renewed and overtaken by the mind of Christ the more and more you open your up to the, yourself up to the revelation of Jesus. Now, writer and commentator Jay Preston Eby says, the serpent that then goes after the earthly part of us, our soul, which is the woman within us. Think about that. Because as we read, that's where this dragon attacked, this religious mindset attacked. And uh, with its mind, will, emotions, and desires, and the soul enters into a wilderness experience. Individually, the man-child is the spirit within us, which is seated with, uh, with Christ in the heavenly places, whereas the woman is the soul. Corporately, the man-child is the body of the sons of God, which make up the man, the bridegroom company. The woman is the virgin church, the bride of Christ. So a lot being said there, but you get an idea of what this commentator is referring to when he talks about the difference between the man-child and the woman. So once again, the woman had been, I say had been as in past tense, seen in the heavenly realm, which represents her spiritual position or shows her from a spiritual standpoint or from the position she was created to function in. And even though you may not be functioning where you know God has created you to function in, it really is just a matter of time. It's a matter of renewing your mind. It's a matter, matter of casting down imaginations. It's a matter of, of, of abandoning every thought that does not line up to the word of God. But now she is seen in the earthly realm, in her rightful position as the church, of the Lord Jesus Christ in the world who represents the Christ child to all humanity. That's why I say we operate in the third heaven dimension, but we work in this earthly realm. We're a part of all the realms of God. The realms of God are not limited to a heavenly realm. God is in all realms. God works in all realms. He works in all of the realms of your humanity. He works in the, all the realms of you spiritually. And so as we look at this today, it's here that our text be begins to come together in that it speaks of the great conflict between the woman, a.k.a. the church, and her earthly temporary placement of conflict and the great red dragon, a.k.a. religion, which is cast down into the earth realm or the realm of, would say it this way, into the realm of, of carnality, which can become a distraction. Now. I want you to think about this. The realm of carnal thinking. Why is it there? What purpose is it? What can happen in this realm of carnal thinking? Here's the truth, folks. Carnal thinking literally can be a place of distraction. That's right. You can be distracted by what is going on in that realm of carnal thought. So, how do you overcome the realm of carnal thought within you? By renewing your mind to truth. Amen? Renewing your mind to truth. It's important that we continue to renew our minds to the truth of the word of God that is in us. Amen? We do not renew our mind to garbage. You can renew your mind to garbage. You can be established in, in negative thinking. But the truth is, is God has given you the mind of Christ for you to operate in. Now, notice this. Revelation 12, 6 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there, uh, there 1,260 days. Now, keep in mind, now, we're not talking about some futuristic event. We're not talking, I saw this video the other day and how the disaster and people being killed by tsunamis and people being killed by earthquakes and fires and, and uh, uh, all this revelation type stuff in the old school of thought. But that's not what this is about. 
what we're talking about is not a woman having to hide if she were going to hide and, and there was disaster and tribulation coming upon the earth. It would not be a place prepared by God. I want you to keep this in mind that here in verse six, Revelation 12, verse six, uh, is that revel where Revelation, Revelation 12, verse 13 comes into focus saying the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the uh, to the male child. So the dragon is now cast down into the lower realms. Let me explain again. We have the higher realm of thought, the heavenly realm. We have the lower realm of thought, the earthly realm. And the dragon that once was a great sign in the heavens, like the woman was a great sign in the heavens, there was a second sign in the heavens, the great red fiery dragon. It's now been cast down to the earthly realms. In other words, it has no right to operate in that heavenly realm any longer. So the part of you that's been renewed no longer has to deal with that part of you of the of the, the lies of this religious mindset. But now it has been cast down into the lower, less important, uh, less focused on realm of thought. You can choose to focus there. But that's why the Bible tells us to set our affection on things above and not on things of the earth. And we're going to read about that in a moment. So the dragons cast down to the lower regions of our earthliness, of where our unrenewed thoughts are, or down to the arena of our carnal thinking, but does not have access to the higher or more important realms of our heavenly thinking any longer. No right to operate there. So if you're living on negative thoughts, if you're feeding on the negativity of other people, if you're feeding on how bad life is and how, how terrible life is and how it's just getting worse, if that's where you live and that's what you're feeding on, here's the reality, folks. You have no, that, that, that negativity has no right to operate in you. Stop feeding on that. You focus on greater and more important things. Our mind is more and more set on things above and not on things of the earth. Colossians 3 verse Two and four says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now, we're going to talk about this appearing in just a moment after I read this in a couple of more translations. But the fact is, we're not talking about a futuristic appearing. We're talking about an appearing that took place in the first century. And I want to show you that. Colossians 3, verse 2 and 4 in the Amplified Bible. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on things above the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, which only have temporal value. For you died to this world, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also then you also will appear with him in glory. In other words, there's going to be a manifestation of glory. So what's he talking about here? Well, let's read this one more time, but read it now from the Passion Translation that says, yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Your crucifixion with Christ has served the tie uh, that has severed the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God, in God, in Christ. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, here's that appearing. He is seen for who he really is. You who, who you really are will also be revealed. For you are now one with him in his glory. That's the purpose of the appearing. It's not an appearing as in a second coming. The second coming took place when Jesus was resurrected from the dead and he was seen by many. But all he did was simply step out of this natural realm into the supernatural realm. And, and the fullness of God moved on the inside of you. But notice what it says. That as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, there's his appearing who you really are will also be revealed for you're now one with him in his glory. So the fact is there is a revealing, an unveiling. And that's what the book of Revelation is about. It's the unveiling of the anointed one in you. 
So concerning your crucifixion with Christ, the Aramaic language could be translated, your death and your life are both hidden with the Messiah in God. So the appearing of Christ refers to the unveiling within you of his coming or of his unfolding or unveiling uh, inside of you. And he becomes more revealed within you and his appearing becomes more visible to you. Come on, somebody. Okay, now, at this, as this revelation unfolds in us, it is then that we can see that this dragon of religious thinking has failed within us in every way. That's right, religious thinking has failed. It has failed to prevent the birth of the man-child uh, back back in the first century. I'm gonna just hang with me. I have a few statements to make here. And it has failed to devour him when he was born. It has failed to also fell in the war which was fought uh, with the sons of God, referring to the rule within our own thinking, and of which we are the fruit or offspring of the man child, hallelujah. And that dragon of religion has failed to retain any place in the heavens of the spiritual realm where the sons of God are seated in Christ, who have the mind of Christ, and he, the man child, is seated on the throne of your heart. Hallelujah. And because of this absolute failure of the great red fiery dragon, the religious mindset, and because the dragon realizes that it cannot continue to fight forever, it saw or realized past tense that its time was short. Remember, we read about that and we've been talking about that. And I want to wrap that up today. In other words, this dragon of religious thinking ran out of steam and became filled with raging anger and was vengeful and desperate. The dragon has been cast down out of your mind, has been cast down out of the right to rule in your mind. And uh, and even in the what we call the lesser realm of thought for the purpose of persecuting the woman who brought forth the man child. So where does persecution come from within you? Where does turmoil read the book of James? Turmoil comes from within you. So this dragon has been cast down. Now listen to this. It is the religious thoughts in your unrenewed mind that will always come against your renewed thoughts that are in you even though the dragon of religious thinking has failed to succeed against the church. When? Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but in AD 70. So John is talking here. And in the book of Revelation, we see the cross. We see the resurrection. We see the life of God. We see the spirit and the word becoming one ingrained in us we see the resurrection and the life of jesus that becomes more important in sons of god than anything else and so when did this happen well the book of revelation was completed roughly about 68 a.d and then re then in a.d 70 uh, titus the roman ruler titus came in and destroyed the temple of jerusalem and many things happened there but symbolically what happened there is religion came to an end of uh, the 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 belief the worship of that temple believing that everything that is everything and could be everything had to do with the temple of jerusalem of uh, the end of, of of the levitical priesthood the end of animal sacrifice uh, the end of all of those things when one price was paid, which was the price of the blood of Jesus Christ one time and for all people forever. Praise the Lord. So let's go a little bit further with this this morning. And let's address this question. Who is the woman of the man child? I want to read to you from writer and commentator Jay Preston Neby, as he says, the woman continues to function as the church on earth. Though greatly dis diminished and weakened by the birth and removal of the man child, this is clearly a revelation by the vision John saw 
For when the man child is brought forth, separated from her, and caught up unto God and to his throne, the beloved seer still beholds her on earth, fleeing into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God for her, and where some someone comes to her assistance and nourishes her for a thousand two hundred and sixty days. The cause, and keep in mind, two thousand. We're talking about three and a half years. The life of Jesus, three and a half years. But there is also the duality of that that we've taught already in the past, how that that is fulfilled and it becomes a complete seven years. Okay, now uh, it it is mentioned uh, in verse six, but then the narrative is interrupted to relate the war in heaven and casting down of the dragon spirit. That being told, the account returns in verse 13 to the woman to reveal what happens to her following the birth and enthronement of the man child. She is seen in her earthly walk and the dragon comes down to that earthly place defeated in the heavens of the spirit to take his vengeance out on her. If you feel like there's vengeance being taken out on you, if you feel like there's trouble that's happening around you, look, that thing has already been defeated. And the lies saying that there's still a an enemy to fight, an enemy to conquer, is literally that. It's a lie out of your unrenewed mind. Amen. Okay. So this man child, which is Jesus, was caught up into the higher heavenly dimension when he was crucified. You all know that story. Buried and resurrected. And the woman, which is the church, now refers to the disciples of Jesus and those who followed him at the time of the cross. Again, we're referring to first century stuff. We're not referring to... Um, we're not referring to something that's happening today. This is first century stuff. This is what went on then and what we reap the benefit of that great victory in the now. Praise the Lord. Okay, so the, so again, the woman, which is the church, referring to his disciples, they fled into the wilderness to hide. You know, there were many disciples that took flight uh, at the death of Jesus, at the crucifixion of Jesus for fear of their own lives. Look, this is why the new birth takes place at the cross and the words encouraging the church are now set in our thinking, which are the thoughts on things above where Christ is. On things above where Christ is. Are you hearing me? Colossians 3, 1 says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So it's important that we understand that this is the place we operate in. Amen. This is the place we live in. This is the place we live and move and have our being or our very existence. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, where Christ above, set, set your affection or your mind on things above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. The word above here is the Greek word ano. Which is and is the uh, the verb of this word means over against or opposite or instead of. Therefore, instead of thinking about things that are of your humanity, focus on things that are of your heavenly identity, which is the realm where Christ dwells. Revelation twelve verse thirteen. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast out of the, the uh, cast to the earth. He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child, capital C, child. Okay, now, in the King James and the New King James, we're not the, which are not the only two translations of the Bible. There are many before and many after. But in these two translations, they both say this dragon persecuted the woman. However, the word used here should be replaced with the phrase to pursue the woman just pursued the woman, not trying to diminish anything, but I want to clear something up for you. Most Greek words have more than one shade of meaning 
or sometimes this word can mean persecute, and yet other times it can mean to follow or to pursue, which is also a form of persecution. Now, the picture that uh, of, of this would be when Pharaoh and his armies pursued the children of Israel as they fled from Egypt into the wilderness. Also, there's many scriptures used for, that use the word persecuted with several variations of meaning attached to them. However, here in Revelation 12, 6, it was the woman who fled as the dragon pursued her. But notice this, that this pursuing of her was in the earthly realm prior or before she went into or went to a place in the wilderness. I want to explain this to you, at least try to explain to you, because I want you to not to be drawn into something, but I want you to hear this because it's so important. When the woman, a.k.a. the church of that day, not the church of this day, but the church of that day, went into the wilderness. It was a place that was prepared for her where the dragon could not touch her. Now, I want to show you something. We need to understand that this wilderness was not necessarily a bad place to be in. Also, we need to understand that the finished work of Jesus has prepared a place for us within himself where no evil can touch us. We believe and we say, and I've heard this for years, people say that I'm in a place of no hurt. I'm in a place where no evil can touch me. The evil one cannot touch me. I've heard that and heard that, yet people constantly focus on an evil one that overcomes them. Look, I want to say to you today that the place was prepared. The Bible says in my father's house are many mansions or many dwellings. Uh, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus was saying in John 14 that I'm going to the cross to prepare a place for you so that you can hide in me. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. And so it's very important to understand that in that place, since we're seated with Christ, seated in Christ, that no evil can touch you there. Why? Because all of this in the book of Revelation is the revelation or the understanding of what John saw then, and therefore it has been completed for us in Christ prior to AD 70. Moving on to Revelation 12, verse 14. I want us to get this before we're done today. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. Why is she flying into the wilderness? To go to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half from the presence of the serpent. Jesus died approximately uh, AD 33, AD 35 ish, right in there, 35 more years, AD 70, the fulfillment of the life of Jesus. Amen. The completion, the number of completion. And we need to understand that he was able, the church fled into the wilderness or the woman. Let's just, let's keep this where, where it's uh, where, why, but verbatim for the moment. The woman uh, had given two, not had, but given two, uh, uh, two wings of, of, of great, uh, of a great eagle where she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. The serpent again, that great red fiery dragon, aka religious mindset in her own thinking. Now from this verse, it seems that the woman receives wings of a great eagle and with them she flies into the wilderness. The Greek word for wilderness as used here is the same Greek word uh, as when Jesus was led into, led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The, the word into here is the Greek word en, and it literally means in. So what are we saying? We're saying that while she was, while he was in the wilderness, whatever this wilderness was, we'll, we'll clarify that, but where, whatever this was, he was led by the spirit while in the wilderness. So in other words, he was able to function and move in the wilderness while he was there, okay? Led by the spirit while he was in that wilderness, not led into the wilderness, but led by the spirit in the wilderness. I'm just saying according to the Greek language, okay? 
Uh, very important that we understand this. Okay, now, the Greek word for wilderness used here uh, is important. Uh, it is the Greek word eromas, which commonly means a desert, a desolate, or a solitary place. The idea is that the dragon is pursuing the woman, a.k.a. the church, in the earthliness of her own thoughts, yet she is in a place of security that has been prepared for her. Amen? So why does it seem like the dragon, like the woman's only, like the woman only, uh, woman's only means of escape from the pursuing religious mindset is for her to escape into a wilderness? Why is that? Well, here's the reality. We need to understand that what God is doing and what God is saying here even takes us back to Genesis chapter 3. So let's notice Genesis 3 verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, a.k.a. religious mindset, within Eve, a religious mindset within Eve, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I have something to say about that since that happened long before the first century. But notice this, that in the mind of God, in the Father's mind, the dragon mindset can no longer feed on the church because she has received two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a times from the presence of the serpent. Writer and commentator J. Preston Eby says, the dragon is pursuing her in the earth, but in her weakened condition after giving birth to uh, the man child, she cannot outrun the dragon. If she turns to do battle with him, she cannot stand in the fray. And therefore, uh, there is but one place of escape, and that is the wilderness. There the dragon cannot live, for there is nothing for him to feed on. There is nothing there for the dragon to feed on either, but her only hope is to flee thither. There she is nourished in a miraculous way, and there she is hid from the face of the serpent, and at that time she is not the, she has not the strength to run into the wilderness, but the loving care of the Father, hallelujah, at all times and in every circumstance is revealed in the fact that the woman was given two strong wings of a great eagle and was able to soar through the air and with two great wings outspread, like an eagle hastening to his wilderness home, lifted up in the strength of God, thus escaping the snare of the fowler. We see that in Psalm 91. The serpent pursues her up to the very edge, the very edge of the desert, but cannot follow further. Now, here's the thing. Father God has brought you into a place of solitude in Christ. Did you hear me? Father God has brought you into a place of solitude in Christ Jesus. That's what you brought the, you've been brought in by the blood of the Lamb and through his finished work. And that is your heavenly position, which means a place causing you to soar above all things. Praise the Lord. Again, I said to you, there's symbolic language in this book and, and, and what we're reading here. Now, remember this. Revelation 12, 12 said for the devil, a.k.a. the dragon, a false accuser has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. This was not referring to what uh, this was not referring to something you're going to face in the future. This was talking about the first century church and the events revealed to the apostle John. Revelation 2.14 shows us that the woman was able to escape the presence of this religious mindset. So how is it that the woman was able to escape? Well, again, I want you to see this. The wings of the eagle were given to her, which are a symbol of the ministry of the spirit and of the word. We studied that weeks ago, months ago even. The spirit and the word within us, 
which are from the heavenly realm of the mind of Christ in our renewed thinking. Remember what Psalm, uh, what Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Psalm, uh, Psalm 9, verse 9 and 10 says, the Lord also will be a refuge or, or a secure height for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know the name of, uh, know your name will put their trust in you. You, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So the fact is that when we read this, we need to understand that God has already made provision for you through his, the finished work of Jesus so that you do not live in defeat of any kind, but always walking in the victory of the one who brought the fullness of God to dwell within you forever. That's right. The fullness of God is in you, and it's there for you to take advantage of anytime you get ready. Amen. You can't get it by seeking. You can't get it by uh, by by uh, any other means than resting in the finished work, having confidence in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. A one-liner, writer and commentator Jay Preston Neve says, "God, the indwelling Spirit, is the eagle." Hallelujah. See, it, it is therefore by the strength of the great wings of the Lord that we're able to soar above all things in life and operate as sons of God in this earth realm. That's kind of like my post this morning. Uh, by the strength of the great wings of the Lord, we are able to soar above all things and operate as sons of God in this earth. That's our position. We've been given that position by God. Amen. Okay. Now. Um, so, I mean, how wonderful is it? How wonderful, amen? How marvelous is it to know what God has done? Psalm 46, 1 says, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. This is a clear picture of the church, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of what we have been given in Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection. Not going to be given, but we have been given. God is the strength of the woman, a.k.a. the church, and it is by his grace that we are delivered from every form of oppression. And here's what that means to me, folks. It means that no religious thinking can possess you or control you, and also that you have been made free from all oppression and all opposition because of the finished work of Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. Look, as this new covenant remnant continues to emerge in this generation, amen, has been given the authority has been already emerged, but we're receiving the revelation of that emerging to our heavenly position. We're bringing healing and order to the chaos in God's creation. You know, the Bible says that he is, that, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Thank God for that reconciliation. But then he says that we have been, uh, uh, that we have been uh, given the ministry of reconciliation. And that's con to continue to make people aware of the revelation that they have been reconciled to God. So we're going to have to be willing to embrace some things, like the idea of getting some things right in our own thinking, uh, uh, so that regarding who we are in Christ, our identity, so that we'll not fall apart while things begin to change while well, God is working in us to bring some old things to an end. We saw that in scripture. So this is lesson number 97. As I close today, I want to ask you a question. I've been asking this question 97 times. This is the 97th time. Are you ready for what's next? I want to encourage you to follow me. I want to encourage you to follow these teachings. They're all listed in my, my YouTube channel, which I'll be glad to post at the end of this show. But here's the thing. The thing that is coming next is and will emerge in you is the continuation of transformation from old mindsets of religion into the mindset of sons and daughters of God, which is the mind of Christ. And look, God's got a new level of thinking. 
for his people, which is to start thinking like kings and operate out of the third heaven dimension. So stick with me on this journey as we continue to, continue to see more of the revelation uh, or, or the unveiling of Christ in you, the hope of glory, so that we can discover what the apostle John stepped uh, as he stepped out of something, he stepped into the third heaven dimension, which changed him forever. So where are we now? Here's where we are. We're still seated with Christ in the heavenly places. We're still seated with Christ in the realms of God. And we already live and move and have our being, have our very existence and live out of our heavenly position in the heavenly places of the heavenly Christ, not heavenly places in Christ, but places is not an actual Greek word translation, but out of the heavenly Christ. Amen. So we're going to have to take on heaven's mindset right now, today in this earth realm so that we can experience heaven on earth. Amen. I hope that you will like and share this video with people. There's people who need to hear about the unveiling of the revelation of Jesus Christ that took place in the first century and is still being unveiled to us and in us today. Amen. I hope you'll have a great day. God bless you and I will see you soon. Bye-bye everyone.